To all the faithful, please enjoy this brand new video. The times in which we find ourselves are gloomy and turbulent, and it would appear that mankind has lost its way toward the road of faith and light. War, destruction, and the imminence of the end times are all things that we witness around every corner. Over several months, numerous seers, both well-known and less well-known, have communicated messages regarding our salvation that were sent to them by the Virgin Mary. Messages were ignored. Prayers are few and weak, and sin is looming over the world. False prophets are all around us, and we are getting more and more confused with each step that we take. We are going to talk about a famous seer today, however it is possible that many of you are not familiar with him. Unfortunately, even in these occurrences, we see the same effects as we have seen in previous Marian apparitions, such as Medjugorje, for instance. It is usually the case that Mary's cautions and kind advice are neglected, and as a consequence, we are in for more difficult times. Every call that is disregarded is a step backward on the path that leads to truth and trust. Akita is the location of the Marian apparitions that we will visit today on our voyage. Sister Agnes Katsuko Sasagawa, a devout nun of the Order of the Handmaids of the Eucharist, is the driving force behind these amazing occurrences. Three of the most well-known communications were sent to Sister Agnes by the entity that would subsequently be recognized as Our Lady of Akita. What is infrequently discussed is the fact that before the manifestation of the Madonna, there were preliminary signals, which were experiences that imbued Sister Agnes's life with a sense of holiness and mystery. Throughout her life, Sister Agnes had maintained a unique relationship with her guardian angel. When she was in a hospital in Miyoko, she was told by herself that a beautiful woman had appeared to her, recited the rosary with her, and taught her the prayer that the Virgin Mary herself had given to the shepherds of Fatima. She also said that she had been touched by the experience. Everything started in June of 1973 in the local community of Juzawadai, which is located in Akita. When Sister Agnes was in the midst of a time of fervent prayer and devotion during those early days, she observed something very remarkable. On June 12, 13, and 14, she witnessed beams of light originating from the tabernacle. These rays of light were seen for three consecutive days. While praying on June 12, 1973, Sister Agnes was able to hear a voice and see a dazzling light emanating from the tabernacle, despite the fact that she was deaf. After that, on June 24, which was the Feast of Corpus Christi, those rays grew even more dazzling, as if they wished to reach the hearts of all of the pious people who were present. Having said that, this was only the beginning. On the evening of June 28, the eve of the Feast of the Sacred Heart, a wound developed on her left hand in the shape of a cross. It was painful and bleeding, and it was an occurrence that was curiously related to a similar wound that was located on the right hand of the statue of the Virgin. Following the occurrence of the cross-shaped wound, the statue, which was comparable to the miraculous medal of Rue du Bac in Paris, became the focal point of a series of remarkable incidents. During the celebration of the Sacred Heart the following day, brilliant angels appeared around the altar and began chanting the Sanctus. It was on July 5, 1973, that a little hole developed in the middle, and it was from this hole that blood started to flow. Due to the excruciating pain that she was experiencing, Sister Agnes was unable to take Holy Communion in the hand, as was the normal practice at that time period. Subsequently, the evening of July 6, 1973 arrived. A lady appeared to Sister Agnes at three in the morning and said, Do not be afraid, I am the one who is beside you and protects you. Sister Agnes was astonished by this strange encounter. Come with me. At first, Sister Agnes was under the impression that it was her cherished elder sister who had died away not long ago during the process of gaining baptism. It was only after some time had passed that she became aware that it was her guardian angel who had assumed the form of her sister in order to avoid frightening her. After that, the angel said, Do not be afraid. Pray for your sins and in reparation for all people. Ingratitude and crimes against Jesus are the wounds that the world causes to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You have a wound that is far less severe than the one that is on the hand of the Most Holy Virgin Mary. 
Now, let us walk to the chapel together at the same time. Sister Agnes entered the chapel with a mixture of terror and trust as she followed the angel. Sister Agnes, who was filled with awe, prostrated herself before the altar as soon as she encountered the angel, who had vanished upon their arrival. After that, she moved closer to the statue of the Virgin Mary, and as she did so, she heard a voice that was both lovely and strange coming from the statue itself, which was made of wood. Sister Agnes was so shocked that she collapsed on her knees and was unable to raise her head. The first communication that she received was from that celestial voice which said, My daughter, my novice, you have well obeyed by leaving everything to follow me. Is your ear condition causing you any discomfort? Believe me when I say that your deafness will be eradicated. Is the wound that you have on your hand causing you any discomfort? We pray as a kind of restitution for the sins of all people. Every member of our community is my daughter, and she cannot be replaced. Are you able to pray the prayer of the handmaids of the Eucharist with grace and fervor? Then let us combine our prayers for it. I commit my body and spirit to be completely connected with your heart, which is continuously offered on all the altars of the world, offering glory to the Father and appealing for the advent of his kingdom. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, who is actually present in the Holy Eucharist, I pray that you would grant me this union. This is a humble offering of myself. I ask that you accept it. For the sake of the glory of the Father and the redemption of souls, use me in any way you see fit. In the name of the Most Holy Mother of God, I pray that I may never be separated from your Divine Son. Regarding me as your precious kid, I ask that you defend and protect me. Amen. Remember the Pope the bishops, and the priests in your prayers. Ever since you were baptized, you have consistently used your faith to pray for them. Please keep praying a great deal, a great deal. Please report everything that took place today to your superior and be sure to comply with anything that he tells you. He has requested that you pray with all your might. During the gathering of the sisters the following morning to read the Liturgy of the Hours, they discovered blood on the right hand of the statue. The wound was identical to the one that was on Sister Agnes's left hand. Yet, due to the fact that the statue's hand was smaller, the wound may be considered to be lesser. One of the sisters said that it appeared to be genuine human flesh, and that it was even possible to see the veins in the skin, much like a fingerprint. On each and every Friday in the month of July 1973, the statue shed blood, much like the cut that was on Sister Agnes's hand. The guardian angel was correct in her prediction that the wound will vanish on Friday, July 27th, leaving no trace behind. During the second apparition that took place on August 3rd, the Virgin Mary issued the following warning to Sister Agnes. My daughter, my novice, do you love the Lord? What I have to say is something you should pay attention to if you love the Lord. It is of utmost significance. You will bring it to the attention of your superior. This world is filled with those who are forcing the Lord to endure suffering. To assuage the anger of the Heavenly Father, I am looking for souls who will comfort Him. I long for souls that, along with my Son, will make amends for sinners and ungrateful people by providing them with the opportunity to suffer and be impoverished. Heavenly Father is getting ready to inflict severe chastisement on all of humanity so that the entire globe might experience the anger that he has for all of humanity. By intervening on several occasions with my son, I have been able to calm the rage of the Father. By providing him the sufferings of the Son on the cross, his precious blood, and the loving souls who console him, I have averted disasters from occurring. This group of victim souls is comprised of those who have been offered to him. The displeasure of the Father can be tempered by the use of prayer, penance, and brave sacrifices. I also want your community to embrace poverty, to purify themselves, and to pray in restitution for the ingratitude and transgressions committed by a great number of people. What I want from your community is the same thing. You should pray the prayer of the handmaids of the Eucharist while keeping in mind the significance of the prayer. Put it into action. Offer as a kind of penance for sins all that God may bring. Everyone must make an effort, by their capabilities and standing, to present themselves completely to the Lord.
Praying is required even in a secular institution of higher learning. The souls that are interested in praying are already being gathered together. Maintain a consistent and ardent prayer life to comfort the master without placing an excessive amount of stress on the form. After what seemed like an eternity, Sister Agnes finally got the final and most significant communication on October 13, 1973. Please, my lovely daughter, pay close attention to what it is that I have to say to you. You are obligated to update your superior. As I have already informed you, the Father will have a horrible retribution inflicted upon all of humanity if individuals do not repent and make improvements to themselves. This retribution will be more severe than the flood, and it will be unlike anything that has ever been seen before. The sky will be filled with fire, and it will consume a significant portion of humanity, including both the good and the evil. Priests and the devout will not be spared from this destruction. They will find themselves in such a forlorn state that they would feel envious of those who have passed away. The rosary and the sign that my son left behind will be the only weapons that will be left for you to protect yourselves with. Make it a daily practice to recite the prayers of the rosary. You should pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests when reciting the rosary. The activity of the devil may even permeate the church to the extent that one will observe cardinals competing with one another and bishops competing with one another. In addition to the destruction of churches and altars, Priests who show reverence for me will be ridiculed and resisted by their fellow clergy. On the other hand, the devil will encourage a great number of priests and souls who have been consecrated to quit the service of the Lord. The church will be filled with people who are willing to make concessions. The adversary will be more tenacious in his pursuit of souls who have been devoted to God. The idea that so many souls have been taken from this world is what is causing me to feel sorrowful. If the number of sins and the severity of those offenses continue to grow, there will be no more forgiveness for those sins. Engage in a courageous conversation with your supervisor. It will be easy for him to inspire each and every one of you to pray and to perform acts of penance. Please, dear believers, pray with strong faith each and every day, not just for yourself, but for all of mankind. Be conscious of the fact that the road of faith is frequently twisting and it is essential that we maintain our level of consistency, an exceptional journey of faith.